Welcome to the e-commerce podcast with Matt Edmondson, a show that brings you regular interviews, tips and tools for building your business online. Hi, and welcome to the e-commerce podcast with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. All of this week's notes and links can be found at ecommercepodcast.net forward slash 85. And trust me, you are going to want them this week. Oh, yes, you are. Because this week we get to hear from Andrew Morgans about the five steps for successful Amazon branding that he personally uses to drive insane levels of growth on Amazon. So don't go anywhere. Hey there, are you a business owner? Here at Orion Digital, we know firsthand that running an e-commerce business can be really hard work. As the online space gets more competitive, it is becoming even more challenging to stay ahead of the curve. We totally get it. So we want to help you succeed by offering a wide range of services, from fulfillment, marketing, customer service, and even coaching and consulting, just so that you can do what matters most. Save yourself the time and the money and let us handle the day-to-day tasks. This way, you can run your business without having to worry about the boring stuff. So what do you say? Are we a good fit for each other? Come check us out at oriondigital.com and let us know what you think. Are you struggling to keep track of your business finances? Let me introduce you to Cinder. Cinder is a tool that can help you automate processes and get accurate reports within minutes. Yep, you heard me. It'll save you time and money by generating P&L reports, balance sheets, and inventory management, all with just a few clicks. With all the key metrics to hand, you'll be able to find the hidden streams of income for your business and make it grow. Cinder wants you to be super successful, so much so that they are offering our e-commerce podcast listeners a special coupon code for up to 40% off. Just use the code EASYBOOKS at checkout and grab yourself a bargain. Just head on over to ecommercepodcast.net forward slash cinder. That's cinder, S-Y-N-D-E-R. So what are you waiting for? Stop struggling and start automating today. Thanks for joining us on the e-commerce podcast. It is great that you are here. Now, whether you are just starting out or if you're like me and have been around for a while, my goal is to help you grow your e-commerce and digital business. And we do that every week by talking to amazing people, but also by having fabulous sponsors of the show. So do check out the sponsors. We don't just let anybody sponsor the show. So uh, do check out the sponsors that we bring to you because they all offer great stuff. Uh, But we also get to chat, like I say, to amazing people, get to ask them all kinds of questions about what they know about how it's going to help us develop online. I try and have the conversation you would have if you got to sit down with them for a cup of coffee. Yes, we dig into their story. We learn the principles that can help us start and adapt and grow online. And today is no exception. Uh, My conversation with Andrew Morgans about his five steps for successful Amazon branding and how you can make sure your products are easy to find on Amazon. So let me tell you why you want to listen to what Drew has to say. Uh, He is a thought leader in the Amazon branding space. He is an entrepreneur with years of experience scaling brands on Amazon. And if that's not enough, he is also a resident mentor at UMKC's Rayner Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation and guest lectures at the Henry W. Block School of Management. That's is a mouthful. Yes, it is. (laughs) And when he's not busy being a business and Amazon genius, Andrew can be found on his weekly podcast called The Startup Hustle. Let me tell you, that podcast is a great podcast and you should definitely listen to it. And I'm not just saying that because I was a guest on there recently, but that has definitely maybe colored my judgment. No, it hasn't. Uh, In spite of me being on it, should I say, it's a great podcast. So do check it out. Uh, You can also catch Drew speaking uh, at e-commerce branding and Amazon conferences and events around the US. Uh, And when it comes to Amazon, let me tell you, he is worth listening to. So let's jump in. Here's my fantastic conversation 
with Drew Morgans. So, Drew, thanks for being on the show. Great to have you. Uh, welcome uh, to the e-commerce podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's great. Now, we've had a, a conversation before. We've had a, a sort of a, as if you're a regular listener to the show, you will know we do these sort of pre-call type things where we, we run through our whole things. And I really enjoyed our conversation. I've, I have been really looking forward to this uh, chat as we talk about all things to do with Amazon because, you know, uh, we've had on the show some friends who, some mutual friends, Jared uh, Mitchell has been on the show. He was the one that has waxed lyrical about you about all things Amazon. So you came very highly recommended to us. How did you get in this whole Amazon game? And why has Jared made you like the go-to expert for this whole topic? Well, me and Jared connected years and years and years ago. Um, I found this, you know, I was someone that grew up abroad, um, just was always trying to find chasing freedom, uh, chasing like something that I was passionate about. I, mm -hmm. I made a good employee as long as I had jobs that made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, if they had me doing stuff that didn't make sense, I wasn't the best employee. Um, you know, just always giving it 120%. Well, I found e-commerce. Uh, I went to school for computer science, got out of school and took a chance at a startup. Um, that startup was putting car parts online way before car parts were oh, online. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we were contacting manufacturers. We were bringing product over from China, eventually tonal covers and trailer hitches and trailer lights and um, was comboing things for amp for eBay. And uh, I just really like I had been trying all these different things. I grew up being kind of a techie building computers. Um, I'm only 35, but I feel like my dad had me on computers when I was like six. So, uh, you know, the early days of computers, I was tinkering and um, always confident around computers. So it was, you know, I find I went to school, found e-commerce when it was kind of really just getting its legs and um, just loved it. It was a perfect mixture of marketing and technology. And that's, you know, that's the name for my company, Marknology. I just combined the words, but really do believe that, that it's um, technical and creative. And that's mm. a fun spot for me. So I just, I really leaned into that. And um, I was coming up with creative ways to be, uh, to be competitors with pricing, whether that was like negotiating shipping rates or it was comboing items to, you know, make the shipping fall off the second and third or fourth or fifth item that might go on a trailer package and um, just finding creative ways to sell. And I love that I could make a change and within 10 or 15 minutes could potentially see a sale or something happen like that. Mm -hmm. And that was just, that was intoxicating to me. So um, I, I, the startup put me in charge of eBay and Amazon. We grew sales by a million. Next company I went to was a step up e-commerce manager, kind of an official position. Same thing, put me in charge of Amazon. We saw sales grow. Um, I was focusing on some of the stuff we we're talking about today, uh, branding, graphics, mm -hmm. photos, copy, advertising. Um, and ultimately from inside a company as e-commerce manager, you know, two or 300 people company, eight retail stores, four brands. I just saw what, uh, what really needed to be done on the Amazon marketplace, what, you know, what a company with four brands needed to, you know, what hurdles they needed to get over in order to be successful. Um, saw that there wasn't anyone doing it and looked to solve it. And so, you know, I met Jared on uh, Elance, I think, maybe 10 years ago, nine oh, wow. years ago. I don't know. Um, I actually got top 10 in the world on Elance uh, in the marketing category. And then Elance was bought by Upwork. Um, and that was really like, you know, how I just met a lot of the early clients that I was working mm -hmm. with was was through that platform. But I humbly so, yeah, I would just say, I would say, you know, a top 10 in the world, but let me just say I was, it was a general marketing category. E-commerce mm -hmm. didn't have all these niches and it was a digital marketing category. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the only US based service provider helping helping people on Amazon. Uh, I actually was helping Jared with affiliate marketing before I started helping him with Amazon. Um, yeah, I was just looking for a side hustle on Elance and Upwork and it turned into what it is today. Isn't that interesting how um, how these how these things sort of start and, and, and sort of how they evolve. And I remember the days of Elance and you know, and, and, and you, you would, you would go and you'd find people literally all, I mean, you, people still do, you have all these sites like now Fiverr and stuff like that. Um, but I, I thought it was a really, it was a fascinating time, I thought, in the industry, do you know what I mean? And it, it, 
it's it's cool that you kind of you kind of got into that. You've met a few clients. You've kept in relationship with them, and and that's what sort of kickstarted it. So, have you been doing Amazon then for? It sounds like over ten years, right? Ten, yes, sir. Wow, wow. And what are some of the key? I mean, obviously, Amazon has changed in the last ten years, um, and I, I, you know, it uh, it feels to me like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Drew, but it feels like. If I was going to start selling product on Amazon, it would be a much more complex place to sell product now than it was 10 years ago. Just like the web was, you know, is now a lot more complex. To, in some respects, it's a lot easier, but in a lot of respects, it's a lot more complex, isn't it? Would, would that be fair to say for Amazon? Is, is, it, has, is that one of the key things that has changed? Yeah, it's changed so much, um, honestly, in the last 10 years. And that's what my company looks to solve for is to help brands navigate that to help brands that maybe were selling eight years ago, five years ago, and don't know how to do it anymore or can't keep up. They don't have staff or a team that's constantly learning all the changes and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, um, it's not that it's rocket science to sell on any of these platforms, but you know, when you really think about the industry, Amazon brought trust to e-commerce. They brought two day shipping and no hassle returns. And you know, a lot of things like that, that, that websites, people were still you know, anxious about, had caution about buying. Sometimes you'd wait a month to get something. Um, they did that for us. You know, Amazon also, they went to all the big manufacturers and kind of put those products online. So even if those those manufacturers didn't have websites, they were now online technically through Amazon. That was in the early days, 10 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a human reaching out to a big brand and making an agreement to purchase items and then they were putting it on Amazon. Well, fast forward five years, and you know you have seller central release and advertising on seller central and amazon's pushing some of those big brands that had made those retail relationships to um start handling amazon themselves start ha handling that catalog themselves they were outsourcing think of it like self-checkout you know at, mm -hmm. at, at the grocery store and amazon was like we're gonna let you sell here but we want you to figure it out yourself yeah. um whether it was the branding whether it was protecting the brand whether it was advertising the fulfillment methods, um, all of it. Amazon, you know, first they bought trust by taking huge losses in fulfillment, mm. massive, massive losses of people, yeah. people trace it back. Um, but they were winning over customer trust with that. Okay. And yeah, so yeah. then they got to a point where they didn't want to lose money anymore with fulfillment. Um, they started pushing that back to three P like I mentioned, or seller central, um, started spending their money to invest internationally. Uh, and started pushing those international markets. If Amazon's going to take a loss, it's there now instead of yeah. in their home ground. Yeah. Um, and this just created a challenge for sellers. You know, there was in the early days, there were the retailers that were just sending their catalogs and Excel files to Amazon. Amazon was putting product up. Then there was the in-between people that were first, there was no products on Amazon in a lot of categories. So people could just fill those categories with product and win essentially mm -hmm. just by putting mm -hmm. kind of blanket products up. Uh, and then from there, private labels started coming over from China. So people would go to Alibaba and source products. They started competing with the manufacturers, the big ones, because the big manufacturers weren't optimizing for the catalog. They were mm -hmm. just putting product up. Well, the private label guys were hungry. Private label guys, girls were hungry. And so they were optimizing their listings, you know, write graphics, photos, reviews, SEO, doing all the little things that mattered. Uh, and then you had these in-between people that were not Amazon, but were making relationships with with uh manufacturers or distributors and saying hey you guys don't have the manpower to figure out amazon but i can make this a big sales channel for you and so you had people with a lot of different motivations that aren't the brand necessarily leveraging and selling the products on amazon i was i was in that group i was putting car parts up online these car parts didn't even have descriptions they were <laughs> they were number files in an excel sheet somewhere right in a product list so um now I'm in the business of going back and cleaning up the branding yeah. and, and product descriptions and the catalog for all these companies now that we're retroactively going. And now that the brands are, are taking um, account, not necessarily accountability, but taking ownership of their products and their brand and the way it's presented on Amazon, it's not going anywhere. And I've decided, how do I make this part of my e-commerce? Uh, you know, some people are, are just wanting to get rid of the word e-commerce altogether. Uh, they think it's kind of antiquated and, um, just calling it commerce again, because, yeah. you know, the way that things really work and sell and flow now is a mixture of all of the channels yeah. um, and how they all work together. So I'm not ready to take that on just yet, but, you know, I understand the thinking there and 
-hmm. You know, that was kind of really the evolution. I just, I seen an opportunity much like, you know, I think part of the reason the Amazon space has been the wild west and slower to develop than some of the other areas is that the best digital marketers were already experts at digital marketing uh, when it came to web and, um, you know, Google PPC and things mm -hmm. like that. So why would they go? They didn't have the need to go take on a new challenge like the marketplace like I did. Yeah. Uh, I could either come in and try to compete with the experts in digital marketing and e-commerce because I was passionate about that. Or I could see a huge new emerging marketplace and, and sink my teeth in that. And so that was kind of, you know, my thinking. Wow. Well, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? And um, th this, there's a lot there. Drew, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of listening to you talk and watching you drink your your coffee, obviously. Uh, and it's there's a, there's a lot going on. So if I was if I was um, uh, starting out in e-commerce now, you know, when we're we're in the pub because it's what we do in England, we go, you know, you all go go to Starbucks and have a coffee. Either way, uh, and we're just sort of shooting the breeze. Would you would you recommend? Hey, listen, if you're doing online stuff, that's great you really need to think about Amazon or are there some businesses that it's been perhaps not suitable for? I think, yes, I'm definitely not a black and white type of person. I live in the gray, I exist in the gray, I've created a business in the gray and I've, I've learned business on the fly. So what I have learned is that there's a million different models to making money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it used to be more black and white where if you're selling a certain way and I didn't believe in that, I would definitely try to, stir you in the direction you know steer you in the direction i thought was more advantageous mm -hmm. um but that was because i was trying to act in your best interest truly mm -hmm. you know yeah. as your consultant or, or your brand manager um now i'm not so sure i don't believe that so much um there's a lot of different ways to sell so you know there's some categories that are super competitive um you know you're calling or I, we're speaking from uh, across the ocean what might be popular or, or difficult in the us might be easier in in the uk or germany mm -hmm. or france mm -hmm. or spain so i would take it play by play for mm -hmm. sure uh, i would say you know to the guy in the pub what are we selling and you know how big is your goals and what are your expectations and you know for a lot of people amazon now is a uh, you know, a way to test the market. Let's take a product to Amazon where it already has massive amount of customers. If we can't get visibility and sales and positive reviews here, there's no need to invest in all this other infrastructure, you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are still seeing Amazon like that. Um, you know, it really comes down to, even if the category is tough, there still could be an opportunity on Amazon simply for brand protection or for, you know, capturing uh, your customers that are already there, even if you're not trying to take some of that that market share or simply what kind of firepower do you have? So mm. do you have a huge off Amazon presence? Uh, you know, do you have a big website? Do you have good social media following? These are all things that can kind of change my my recommendations at the time. Mm. That's really interesting. So it's it's not actually straightforward. It's not actually black and white. There are there are these sort of nuances to think about. Um, with Amazon, which I think is quite interesting. So what are some of the things that I maybe should think about then as a business owner, if I'm looking to think about Amazon in 2022, if I'm looking to think about building my brand, I mean, it is a, I mean, we could get into all kinds of things. Ethics aside is probably the best thing to see. You know, I mean, there are ethics, a lot of ethical questions around Amazon, which I get. I don't think that's the purpose of what the today's show is. Let's assume that we, we've dealt with those and we're happy. I'm just kind of thinking one in two transaction is probably done on Amazon, certainly in the States, the UK. I'm imagining it's that sort of statistic now. Um, the way they've got distribution sewn up in the UK is just unbelievable. You know, I can order something on Amazon and it'll be here in three hours. I mean, the UK is a mm -hmm. tiny island, so it's possible to do things like that, I suppose. But it's still remarkable. So what are some of the things that maybe I should I should be thinking about? Well, keep in mind, everyone that's listening, um, you know, ethically, uh, I've been helping tons of small businesses way before I ever, you know, escalated to larger brands in my career, um, helping small Kansas City brands or small U.S. brands get international exposure at times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, any marketplace, any new emerging technology is going to have its flaws and its downsides, its cons, so to speak. Um, but there's also amazing things happening for small brands, for um, for all kinds of sellers. It's, it's truly Amazon selling there, yes, but just like any other marketplace, it's free trade. Um, 
yeah, have changed lives on this platform. So for me, I mm. still think of it very positively, just like That's anything. Really social social media can be full of fear and anxiety and comparison, or it can be uplifting and inspiring and motivating. You know, it's yeah. how you use it's how you use it. And so, yeah. you know, what I would say to that brand is, let's say hypothetically, this brand already exists, meaning they are in brick and mortar, mm. um, but they're not on Amazon. That's just like an easier scenario to think about. Um, let's let's start with seeing if you're on Amazon. Do you have resellers or distributors or anyone? Have they already created your product and put it up on Amazon? If so, we're going to look at that and see what the quality is. You know, another thing to do when I say quality, I mean, what do the pictures look like? What is the you know, do you have all the bullet points? Does it look the same as on your website as it does on Amazon? Is there a huge drop off? If you don't know, probably not. But we're going to check for that and just see what's going on. Um, you know, the other thing is, uh, what are our competitors doing? So do you have active competitors? Is this an invention or is this, you know, something we have active competitors? If you're already in brick and mortar, I assume you do. Um, what are they doing on the, on the marketplace? What's the potential? Um, at the same time, I've launched pl plenty of brands and products into categories that didn't have a front runner or didn't have a competitor. And we became that, that front runner because we were first. So, you know, these are this is the kind of evolution of things I would start checking almost just like an audit. Let's see where you're at. Let's see where you're going. Um, like one of your brands, you know, we talked about that on a call maybe a month ago, did some research and there's some there's some demand for it already on Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, people searching for it, you know, so that, that's part of the research that I would do initially to say, hey, what's the opportunity here? What's the market? You know, we have software right now that will tell you. This is what your competitors are doing. This is when they launch a new product. This is, um, you know, their average sell price this is their average review count. This is how much that market category has grown in the last year, in the last two years. So we can get some intelligence even at this early stage in the game um, for what the opportunity is. Um, yeah. From there, the opportunity of the marketplace changes to what's the opportunity within the brand and the relationship between us and the brand. And so I'm looking for, you know, what's your what's your marketing budget? You know, for advertising, you have to spend, you have to pay to play on Amazon. It's how you get data. It's how you find rank. Um, but all those things being said, even if you're not trying to grow to have a ten million dollar account, or you just you have a brand that's in brick and mortar. You want to dabble into Amazon because I think that's OK to step one foot in and figure things out is I think brand protection and making sure that your brand um, is on point is one of the number one things to do, whether you plan on making it a viable channel, whether you plan on selling through resellers or distributors, whether you plan on selling yourself and stocking your products, all those things. Um, you know, there's plenty of brands that they're not selling direct and we just manage their brand on Amazon. And so you're yeah. like, well, what is what does manage the brand mean? Um, and to me, that's if someone's on your listings on Amazon, do they feel just like the brand as if they they came in contact with it in brick and mortar? Or they came in contact with it on the website or social media. That's really that feeling of of um uniformity between the brand or cohesiveness, I guess is a better word between the brand is really what we're looking for. Mm. That's really interesting that you talk about that. I mean, I remember um, with one of our e-commerce businesses, uh, we would buy uh, very well-known brands. We would sell them on our website. But part of the terms and conditions that that brand would have for being able to sell their products was that I would sign a piece of paper saying that I would not sell them on sites like Amazon or eBay Um because they felt like they couldn't control the brand well enough on those sites. Do you, do you see what I mean? And it was that whole kind of uh, that whole kind of thing. We don't want to be seen on that. We we if you want to sell it on your website, you have to have these colors. You have to have. Do you know what I mean? They were they were really specific. Like you have to use this logo and so on and so forth. And um, I guess one of the changes I've noticed in Amazon over the last few years is more and more. I. I see Amazon's not totally customizable, but I see it 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 is a bit more customizable than it, it used to be, right? And so you it, it it feels like maybe brand control is a little bit easier on Amazon than it used to be. Would that be a fair reflection? Yes. I wouldn't say necessarily easier so much as possible. And I would say in the early <laughs> days fair enough, yeah. in the early days there wasn't enough thought leaders. Um speaking to those brands that were afraid to, to put their product on Amazon because they didn't know how to control it. You know, now I can give you, you know, the instruction manual on how to control your brand. Um, and that's why I started my business. And I'm not trying to, you know, make this a sales pitch by any means. But my point just being, 
I was passionate about people saying one thing and being wrong. And let me show yeah. you how you can, how you're wrong or not necessarily how you're wrong, but how we can solve that problem that you have or that fear that you're facing. And let me show you some solution, possible solutions for that. Um, because if we turn this negative marketplace around for you, it can be a huge, huge opportunity. And, and for many brands that were only in brick and mortar that we helped, you know, in the pandemic, it was a lifeline to be, yeah. to being on Amazon, um, and save, save their business, you know, yeah. lots of businesses. So, um, it's really that perspective shift, which like you didn't get me started on mindset just because, you know, you don't understand how many, um, business owners through the last 10 years I've spoken with that were afraid uh, of something they didn't understand, um, you know, and, and, and afraid of changing and evolving. Um, and I just look to solve those one by one, you know, whether that yeah. was, I understand, I need to understand the problems first to be able to come up with the solutions for a lot of these brands. But, um, you know, things like things like uh, reseller agreements, like the brand you're talking about has, which are strong reseller agreements that, um, make it so that there's not 15 people selling on Amazon the same product and all of them have control of the photos and copy. And how do we get it where we have brand control? How do we get it where our brand is registered with Amazon and we have some rights, so to speak, with with what happens there? Mm. Um, those were things I was looking to solve. Map pricing. You know, I've saved uh, some distributors, probably companies uh, in regards to, you know, they had distributors in, in the UK uh, or in Europe that were selling in the US and they couldn't control map pricing because Amazon has issues around map pricing depending on how what what type you're selling um, and helping them solve for that enough mm -hmm. to just you know keep their business like those kinds of things um, are the problems we solve every day yeah uh, fascinating absolutely fascinating well Drew listen uh, stay where you are we're just going to take a few seconds to thank this week's show sponsors and then I'll be back uh, with Drew in just a few minutes where we're gonna get into these five steps for successful Amazon branding. Don't go anywhere. Are you struggling to keep track of your business finances? Let me introduce you to Cinder. Cinder is a tool that can help you automate processes and get accurate reports within minutes. Yep, you heard me. It'll save you time and money by generating P&L reports, balance sheets, and inventory management, all with just a few clicks. With all the key metrics to hand, you'll be able to find the hidden streams of income for your business and make it grow. Cinder wants you to be super successful, so much so that they are offering our e-commerce podcast listeners a special coupon code for up to 40% off. Just use the code EASYBOOKS at checkout and grab yourself a bargain. Just head on over to ecommercepodcast.net forward slash Cinder. That's Cinder, S-Y-N-D-E-R. So what are you waiting for? Stop struggling and start automating today. Did you know that nutrition is one of the keys to maintaining the energy you need to drive your business forward? Vegetology creates incredible unique supplements in an eco-friendly, ethical and sustainable way that feed your body with the precise nutrients it needs. We're not just making you healthier, we're helping to protect our planet too. Our products are vegan friendly and approved by the Vegan and Vegetarian Society. Plus, they're gluten free so they fit perfectly into any lifestyle. They also contain no artificial colors or flavors, making them good for your taste buds too. You can feel good about your food choices with our healthy, natural supplements. We have something for everyone, whether you want to boost your immune system or just get more energy every day. And we're always working on new ingredients so that we can provide even better products in the future. So what are you waiting for? Get started now by heading over to vegetology.com. So I'm back with Drew. We are talking about the five steps for successful Amazon branding. So let's jump into that whole section, Drew. Where do we start? If I want to be successful uh, on Amazon with my brand, I want to grow it out. Where, where do I start? So really, you start with something called brand registry on Amazon. And the way that you obtain brand registry is by submitting documents to Amazon saying, hey, this is my brand. Um, I have a trademark for it, which kind of creates legitimacy uh, in Amazon's mind. And if you have a trademark, you submit the paperwork, you, you can get something called brand registry. Brand registry can be its solo identity or it can be attached to an account. Um, and really that's step one, which is to get brand registry for an account. So let's say 
you know, if you're an existing seller that's been selling in brick and mortar for years or have built, you know, a, a bigger brand like that when coming to Amazon, typically they have trademarks already in place. Mm -hmm. um, but for newer sellers or newer brands that are just trying to get their their start, um, you might want to consider a trademark even from the beginning. And a lot of people think trademark, they immediately go to, okay, USPTO, U United States Patent and Trademark Office, I think yeah. is that uh, abbreviation. Um, but it's not just about protecting people copying your images or people like, you know, taking your products. It's it's the ability to tell Amazon that you're a legitimate brand and that yeah. you want access to all of their branding um, tools that they have. Uh, so, you know, we can get into that. But, you know, there's it went from nine months to obtain a trademark here in the U.S. when I started to now you can get one for less than eight hundred dollars in two weeks uh, oh, wow. through an through an Amazon program. Um, oh, so, so Amazon because they actually have a program to help you do that. Correct. Well, wow. OK, pretty cool. Um, you know, it's something to think about if you're launching a brand, but especially if you have an invention or a product that really needs some storytelling mm -hmm. to get people to understand what it is, you're going to need those assets no matter what, because you need that extra space on the page. You need the ability to add video, things like that. Um, so yeah, I would say consider a trademark if you're a new brand or you're starting with brand registry as step one, if you're an existing brand with a trademark. That's really interesting. So I, I, what you said there, which I thought was quite interesting is by being a trademark, obviously you, we all understand the benefits of trademarks and, and, you know, protecting your product, but you made this comment about it tells Amazon you're a serious sort of company. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're a serious brand. Um, so what does that afford to you by doing that? Do you know I mean, why do, do Amazon treat you differently? What, what sort of what extra do they give you? I guess is my question. Yeah, so it's evolved over time, but it used to be something that was only given to 1P or these retail vendor central sellers. So if you were selling to Amazon direct, you got access to these branding tools. If you weren't, sorry. Uh, and they've just changed that over the years. First, it was brand registry one. Now it's brand registry 2.0. Um, and they give you tools like being able to add video. They give you tools like within advertising, a few different ad types that aren't available unless you have brand registry more, more at the top of the page and some of the ones mm -hmm. that can have graphics. Um, there's something called an A plus page on Amazon, which if you're, if you've ever been buying on Amazon, you see the kind of the great images on the left, you see the, the price, the description or bullet points, you scroll down, you start, if you start seeing like a almost like a magazine page or a really beautiful infographic type of page. That's called an A plus page. Mm -hmm. um, and that's huge. It can, it can impre increase conversion rates anywhere from five to 15% on a page okay. if you're doing it right. It's also one of the only areas you can cross sell. So as a brand with multiple products on that A plus page, you can kind of list your other products in the family and, and get someone to jump between your products instead of jumping to a competitor's products or something like that, or getting back to the search bar and starting all over. Yeah. So some huge opportunities for brands there. Um, you can also use brand registry to protect the brand, submit violations, uh, report competitors, uh, any number of things like that. You're going to reach out to the brand registry team that would step in. So it's a mixture of marketing tools and, and branding tools. Um, all the way to brand protection, like being able to submit a case against a, a violator or something like that. Wow. Okay. So I, I get your point. It's worth doing, right? The, it's a must. Uh, the, it's a must. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So I've gone to uh, the brand registry. I've registered my brand. Um, I've got that. I've got that all sorted out. Uh, where, where do I go to next? Okay. So think of Amazon like a different channel than you've ever sold on and try to have the perspective of just an open mind to say, okay, I'm not going to try to be as cheap as possible. Let's remove price from the thinking as a seller and just That's think really, about, sorry, just to riff off that a little bit. That's a really interesting point because one of the things that, um, I, I don't know if it's the same in the States, but certainly in the UK, one of the things that the British people have in their heads over the years associated with Amazon is Amazon will be the cheapest. Now, I don't believe that it is when you do comparison, but there is this belief that Amazon is quick and cheap. And what you said there is, it sort of flies in the face of that a little bit. Do you know what I mean? And I, I'm curious as to why you, sorry, I was just riffing off what you said. I'm curious no. now why, why, why you said that. So I want to answer that in two ways. One is because 
the European market is behind the US market on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so right now what you have is a bunch of the wholesalers and distributors selling on Amazon versus the brands and manufacturers selling and controlling it themselves. Mm -hmm. So you have the distributors just like the distributors are just competing with other distributors. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, there might be five or six in in Europe that are selling the same things. They're putting the products up on Amazon. And the only thing that they can control because they're not the brand, the manufacturer is the price. And so it becomes a price war uh, in, the, in the fast is just because that's Amazon's fulfillment system. But what has yet to happen is for brands to come t- to the European marketplace in a big way and start creating product and branding and storytelling that will sell the product regardless of price. So what happens, you know, oh, okay. I, so I can 100 percent say that, um, you know, oh, we've worked with 300 plus brands since I've started, which is a lot. Um, I've seen a little bit of everything and, and I've, I've have multiple number one bestsellers on Amazon that are double the competition's price. Mm. Um, after years of selling, it's not just like a one time grabbed it and then lost it. No, it's, we maintain the number one position with higher priced items. Um, I personally am an advocate of, of selling higher priced items. Um, you just have to do a much better job at branding and storytelling. So the guys that don't know how to do branding and storytelling resort to just lowering price and putting product up and they're just moving tons of volume because they don't understand the branding and storytelling and conversion game. If you understand that game, you can actually level up to the next level, charge more price, make more margin. Um, But you have to do a better job of, of speaking to the customers. And so it requires a different level of expertise than simply putting it on Amazon. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Totally. I'm curious to know then, do you think that the European market will become like the US market where um, it will stop being distributors sort of fighting each other on a brand, uh, on a price differentiation differentiation basis, and it will be more the main guys and manufacturers doing direct consumer sales. They will start to to do Amazon better, they'll start to do their brand better on Amazon and then they'll sell direct at a higher price. Do you, do you think that's where it will go? I really do. Um, I've just seen it, you know, the private label guys, they've done their best. They've created graphics. They've got, you know, they've got, fo- they've got, uh, products, commodities, they're selling, creating brand is difficult. Um, so that's where they're looking for help. They figured it out basically to here. And now they're like, okay, now these big manufacturers and brands are coming in with actual stories and actual branding. Uh, what are we going to do? Okay. Let's Mm -hmm. expand internationally. Uh, so the, you know, the brands that don't have super strong branding are now looking to expand internationally and take over those marketplaces. Um, I've seen it happen in the U S already. I just, uh, I can only fix so many catalogs at the same time. (laughs) So, uh, you know, it's, um, a lot of the U S brands though, that are now getting their, their stuff set up on the U S in a strong way and understanding the value of it. Um, that's what takes time is them understanding Mm -hmm. the power and it's, it's something they have to learn. Um, and then I think the European manufacturers will, um, adjust as well. Right now they want to sell in the U S market because it's, it's a bigger marketplace and their products not there. But once it's there, they're going to they're going to understand, hey, it's going to make sense to sell to our to our own market as well, um, our own customers. And I think they'll start paying attention. Um, you know, there's a lot lower cost of acquisition in your own market than there is mm-hmm. to go into a new one. And that, that's something to be said. Um, I've worked with a lot of Canadian brands and manufacturers um, and they're always looking to the U.S. I typically convince them to sell in Canada as well since we're at it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's usually a big opportunity for us. Yeah, that's really interesting. Very good. Okay, so I've got my trademark. I'm not selling at a cheap price. Um, okay, we're back to three. I need to jump in yeah. here because what I what I wanted to say was, you know, I wish that I had learned the value of of great content uh, before um, I did. It took me a long time. I think it was a little bit of an insecurity as a consultant as well to track down great graphic designers, great photographers, convince brands to spend money on there when they're just not, you know, convinced on the platform in general. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, brands put pro- put photos up on Amazon like it's the same as their website or the same as their catalog, whatever else they're doing. And it's simply not. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, it's just you're playing the wrong game. Uh, yeah. And it's, you know, it's essentially you're filling some gaps and some white space on the listing, but you're not doing anything worthwhile. And so there really is this storytelling aspect to Amazon that is available. And I think because Amazon didn't give us the tools at the beginning, we had to be very creative with the way that we did this. And now that the tools are coming about, it's, uh, 
it's it's easier and more accessible and we're taking the same things we learned the hard way and putting them into play you know now that it's more yeah, customizable yeah. um but it's simple things like brands will have amazing like social media content or lifestyle images and be like these photos are beautiful let's put them up on amazon and if the photo you know a lot of a lot of searches happen on the mobile device um mm -hmm. people aren't reading the content even if the search algorithm is um and they're saying, what are these photos telling me? And if the photo is not in one word, in one sentence, in one read, telling you exactly what the customer needs to get out of that photo, it's not doing its job. And mm -hmm. so many times brands have these beautiful lifestyle photos or 18 different versions of the box, pictures of the box, uh, you know, and it's not calling out any value. Uh, it's not calling out any of the value in the products. It's not calling out our main keywords, our main yeah. call to actions, you know? So it's a matter of, um, taking that brand guide like you were talking about whenever you're selling on your website from those other brands saying okay this is the look and feel of this brand whether it's your own or whether it's one you're selling and you've been giving stewardship of it um and you're saying okay how do i get this this amazon page to reflect the same feeling as their website or their social content and maybe that doesn't exist at all but mm -hmm. let's say that it does you're trying to create cohesiveness um yeah. you're trying to cross sell your products um you're trying to make it where if someone just reads the copy they will buy if they just mm -hmm. read the if they just look at the photos they'll buy mm -hmm. um if they just read the reviews they'll buy and you're looking at all these different areas um and trying to solve for them you know branding can also be uh branding can also be responding to reviews or um you know responding with uh to customers concerns about products and questions and answers and, and being a responsive brand as well if you're responsive in person if customer service is at the top of your list as a brand and you don't have any customer service or personal touch on amazon you're dropping the ball right mm -hmm. there's a there's a misconnect so i'll pause there there's so many things you can do but really it's um thinking about amazon as its own channel investing mm -hmm. in it enough to say hey i'm if i'm going to do this channel if i'm going to sell in this channel I'm going to do it the right way uh, and not cut corners. Um, and I think you'll give yourself the highest chance of success and your brand will also look amazing along yeah. the way, you know, so yeah. whether you're and exiting, it's, whether whatever, it's, it's all part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I, I, I get that. And I, I guess the question that, that's in my head, Drew, at the moment is, does typically speaking, um, the, the brand look and feel, I, it needs to sort of look and feel the same on Amazon as it does on my website. Um, but do I, is it, is it often the case that actually the messaging on Amazon needs to be tailored for Amazon or if I've got, can I use the messaging that's already on my website? Do you see what I mean? Is there, you, you treat it like as a separate marketplace, a separate channel. Does that mean it's a slightly different language, a slightly different way of presenting information, a slightly different way of telling the story and so it's not a case of copy and paste. Really, I need to think about it in a slightly different way. Correct. I would say you're right. It's a slight, it's slight differences. Like I'm not reinventing the wheel in regards to our, our Amazon methodology for selling. Uh, we call it the marknology effect. It's mm -hmm. really just the little tweaks, the little subtle differences between traditional website SEO or social media content versus like what Amazon's giving us. Amazon has mm -hmm. released Amazon posts. It's very similar to Instagram right now. It puts free posts on your listings. You get tons of free traffic right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not pay to play. Very similar to Instagram. So there's like mm -hmm. small tweaks like that. Um, but think of it like this. You know, if you're on, if you're on, um, let's say an apparel company, apparel store. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're on their website. You're browsing. You typed in, I, I like a streetwear brand in New York called Kith. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're on kit.com you know you're on kit.com because i clicked on kit.com or i searched it or i'm there i'm on their website yeah, yeah. if i go to a jacket um you know i'm looking through men's collections new arrivals bestsellers men's uh men's button-ups maybe you know a category like that i click on it i'm looking through the options i click on the black jacket stay with me uh i click on the black jacket and the description is going to be black jacket comes in extra small through double XL, uh, insulated for warmth, uh, mm -hmm. button up, you know, buttons up the front, uh, draw string around the hood. You know, those are like, that's the content on the listing. Maybe you have a video of a guy twirling in it or something, you know, mm -hmm. like 360 view of the product. Um, yeah, you have similar products related to this item. None of those, none of that content there, for example, like the SEO or the descriptors are anything that a, a customer on Amazon would search 
Okay, so Kith might not okay. be the best example, but essentially no one's typing in drawstring closure around the hood or no one's typing in front button blazer, uh, you know, like front button zips. Um, so you're really thinking like, how is the customer searching? The men's the customer is probably searching men's black blazer or men's button up black blazer. Um, and so if you just took that copy that was on the website and put it on Amazon, it would never match up with someone's search mm -hmm. unless they typed in Kith. Yeah. Okay. So you can capture your branded searches by making sure like your brand name is in your titles and, and capturing like that. But if you want to grab new customers, which is the point of being on Amazon, mm -hmm. you have to optimize your copy for a search algorithm like like uh, like on Amazon. You're you're, yeah. you're essentially lined up with everyone else. These search terms are what pull you out the difference. And so that's a subtle example. It's a silly example, but it's a subtle example of just like. On a website, you're assuming that this is all Kith and you don't need to be told that it's Kith because you're there versus on Amazon, you're trying to find it out of a massive catalog. Um, yeah. And what are, you, what are you searching? Very good. So f number three was then focus on creating great content. And um, we, we talked a little bit about that. What would be uh, number four? What's the, the next sort of step we need to think about? Yeah, so that, that one would be packaging. Um, you know, think of it like, and there's always somewhere to start. So if you're a new seller listening to this and just trying to develop a product and sell it on Amazon, put it in a plastic bag, put it in a brown box. Selling is better than perfection by any means, but we're talking about branding today. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna stick to that. I guess what I'm saying is anything that gets the job done is better than not selling uh, yeah. by, you know, by far. But if, but thinking about packaging like, um, you know, when we were at the mall as kids and, and you would have somebody that had the Doc Martens bag or someone that has the American Eagle or um, whatever it might be, carrying that bag around in the store. Why do the brands spend money on on a big branded bag like that? Well, you're, you're advertising to all the other shoppers there mm -hmm. that you went in that store and bought something. Right. Um, and I think that sellers and brands can think about that, too, with their customers and their packaging. Um, mm -hmm. So. You know, two things to say here. One would be the unboxing is huge. So what is that experience that the customer gets, even if they open an Amazon box and your package is inside there? Mm -hmm. How do they feel about it? This is all everything we're talking about. With branding is about trust, trust. And yep. as a brand, you're trying to get it and maintain it and grow it. And so, you know, if if I receive an item in a great box or great packaging, I immediately feel better about my purchase. I feel like the brand took enough time to make this package or this box like unique and clever and on brand. They probably also took as much time on the product itself because this is the last area that oftentimes gets attention. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely a subconscious feeling um, and it really matters. Another thing is, you know, I'm buying brands myself right now that were made for Amazon, you know, from private label sellers or different things mm -hmm. like that and bringing packaging and, and some tweaks and adjustments like that to the brand that I'm purchasing. So, you know, how can we make it where this product? Sure, it's great for Amazon, but could it also be on a retail shelf? Well, as yeah. it is, no, but let's get it ready to be on a retail shelf, um, even if we're just selling on Amazon. So those are some of the things we're doing. Packaging is it's huge. Uh, also includes ways to like upsell your other products and your newest releases and some of your other products and get them to add you on social media. You know, your your packaging is a way to um, get shared and get influence yeah. and kind of do that digital word of mouth thing that we love. Um, yeah. So I would say number four, pay attention to your packaging. Um, we talked about the looks and aesthetics of it because that's what comes to mind, but also you know, optimizing for size and weight and dimensions mm. can can make massive profitability changes for you on Amazon. That's and one of the things in the, in the back of my head as I'm listening to you talk, Drew, and by the way, I agree with everything that you said, whether you're doing Amazon or an e-commerce business, how you ship that product is is remarkably important, you know, and, and how the customer feels when they open the parcel, remarkably important. One of the things, and this may not be, may it may be an inaccurate assumption, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but if I sell a product on Amazon, um, in effect, I'm selling to Amazon's customer. That is Amazon's data that I'm not getting that email address. I'm not getting that customer information. Amazon keep and retain their customer data. OK. Um, and so part of the question in my head with Amazon has always been, how do I how do I encourage people to sort of connect with me as the brand? Um, 
uh, you know, me as the, the the seller of that product on Amazon, because obviously it's great that I've sold the product, but I, I, I want to somehow start to, you know, traditional marketing. I want to engage in a relationship with that person if I can. Um, and it's just, it's straight, as you're talking in my head, I can, you know, I'm seeing that seems that could happen with your packaging. You know, you're encouraging people to connect via social media, to connect via your website. Mm -hmm. And that's one way to draw people in to, you as as a brand would that be a fair comment yes sir um you're right on and you know there's a lot of strategies i get excited thinking about how to pull those things in because you know i've just been uh been out here blazing the way so to speak in regards mm -hmm. to like solving for some of these things and some of them were just problems and now we've come up with solutions and other ones are you just you get to be super creative in the way that you you do these things especially all within amazon's terms of service at the same mm -hmm. time you know so it can be inner to win um you know, new products coming out with an insert in a box. It could be something on the box that's a QR code or that brings them straight to your social media. Or let's say you're selling pets, pet products, tag your pet and get a, you know, free 30 day supply. Or yeah. um, there's so many different ways you can get customers to engage, you know, follow up emails, um, mailers afterwards. What I would say about uh, Amazon's data is that um, we can think about what we can't get from Amazon. Or we can think about what we can get. Okay. Uh, I like so, how you reframe that. Yeah. And I think that's that's something that a lot of brands and manufacturers need to think about. Sure, you can't get everything that you can get on a Shopify website, but mm -hmm. there's still a whole lot of information we can get. And so, you know, advertising is a massive way to get data on, adver on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, through advertising, we can find out what our customers are searching, the exact thing that they're looking for. In a retail store, you can't get that. They come in, they look around the whole store, maybe they pick up your item. You don't know why they came in. You don't know what they were looking for. Did they change their mind when they bought it? Did they just grab it? Was it an afterthought? You have to do massive customer surveys and research and things to find that. On Amazon, within six months of, of heavy advertising, I could tell you exactly what customers are searching to find your product. I could tell you if we have any kind of issue converting them once they find it. Um, we can dial conversion rates into 40%, 50% sometimes. So to me, that is incredible, incredible, mm. right? So that's the advertising and the keyword data. Mm. Um, because Amazon converts so high, it's different than a website and a landing page. So Google mm. PPC to me isn't even as accurate as Amazon PPC because yeah. there's just a lot of other factors. Yeah. Um, another thing would be zip codes. Okay, so you can get a lot of names and zip codes and things like that. So let's say you're a food retailer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can be selling on Amazon for a couple of years. I've seen this strategy enacted. Um, and you take the, the sum of those zip codes and go start selling to grocery stores in the area saying for the last two years, I've sold 30,000 units to your zip code. Right. Oh, wow. uh, and then you're going in reverse and having an opposite conversation, but already mm -hmm. telling them that you've been selling there, uh, the market. Yeah. Or, or take the zip codes and type in, you know, do Facebook retargeting and just, yeah destroy that market or that segment, yeah. right? So yeah. um, there's ways from getting zip codes to getting customer search data to, um, you know, to those tactics you got to get to get yeah. people to engage with your brand. Another one is to like, you know, save some products just for the website. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a huge fan because I feel like you should be anywhere that your customers want to buy and the brand should stop saying, hey, I want to make you buy here or make you buy yeah. here. And instead say, hey, if you want to buy on Amazon here. Um, at the same time, it's a way where maybe some products don't make sense for Amazon profitably uh, or something like that, or maybe just don't move enough volume to be on Amazon with that product. And yeah. so there's certain products you're keeping behind for your website. And, um, you know, so from there, uh, maybe like the, the brands coming in, they're like, oh, they have additional colors on their website or they have additional options on their website and they go and engage with you there for example, or maybe you have customize, uh, you know, customization, make your, make your website much like a brick and mortar that just has a lot more extra content than the, than Amazon can do. And you'll give your customers reason to engage with you there. Um, well, I like that. And that's all a free extra bonus, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but I like that focus, uh, on the, the data they give you. And apparently they give you a lot uh, of information, which you can use to help grow your business, uh, which is great. So, uh, Pay attention to packaging number four. Finally, number five, Drew, where, where are we at? Provide great customer service. And, uh, um, you know, this is this is one of the things you lose when you outsource the work 
to mm-hmm. distributors or wholesalers or choose not to even be there. Um, you're letting your, you know, those distributors care more about your brand and you have to trust that they do. You have to trust that they care more about every single customer that you have versus, uh, you know, their, their bottom line. And mm-hmm. the, the truth is distributors are selling all kinds of brands, um, yeah. you know, and they're going to focus on the 80, 20 rule, the best moving products of that brand um, versus supporting every product. Like it's the only product you're selling. Uh, and I think that as a brand, you just get that extra touch. You get the chance to, make someone's Christmas by getting them product out in time. You get chances to, you know, respond to bad reviews or to questions about your product with truth, truthfulness and authenticity about around the product. People, people respond to that. You might see a negative review. You see the brand respond. It seems fair. I move on. That negative review doesn't tarnish my opinion. Um, So, you know, with great customer service, you can only have that by having control of your brand there. Uh, If you're not doing that, you don't even have the, the possibility of this. So, um, it's a tried and true thing. Don't make Amazon one of those channels where you don't provide that, you know, that amazing service. Um, and I think you'll do, you'll do great. You know, there's been brands I come in, uh, come in to help that, you know, customer service and just like response times. And it's really operationally that they're suffering, not even from a branding or, you know, a a product base or, you know, they're just suffering from the logistics and operations around Amazon, which is Mm -hmm. customer service and shipping time and all those kinds of stuff. So, you know, there's so much, there's so much to think about, um, you know, but at the same time, it's the basics, it's the basics of good business just translated for Amazon. Yeah. And that's what I like actually about what you said. None of this stuff, uh, to quote you at the start is rocket science. Um, it is the fundamental rules of e-commerce, you know, good customer service, good pricing, pay attention to your packaging, you know, brand well, protect what you're doing, keep the story consistent, tell it in a way that works for your customer. I mean, it's it's all straightforward stuff, but you've tailored that for Amazon, which I think is which is fantastic. And I and it's, I guess, learning more about how to do that. And the, the thing I, I love talking to you, Drew, is obviously you've gone through the mill. You've you've figured a lot of this stuff out over the last 10 years, which is great. Um, and so I think it what I think what you've done. Um, if I'm honest, uh, is you've you've made Amazon almost like an exciting place again to sell for those that maybe weren't that excited about it. I think uh, listening to you talk, you've made it accessible, but I think you've been quite honest in saying you can do this, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a bit of work. It's not like you can just throw it on there, forget about it. You're going to have to think about this. You're going to have to be strategic in what you're doing. Um, and if you can, if it's the right product and you do that, you, there is still there's still the possibility to do well on Amazon. Would that be a fair reflection? Yes, sir. Um, you know, and that's where I'm, maybe you need to invest in some content. Maybe you need to invest in photography. Maybe you need to invest in, a, in an agency like ours or there's there's plenty um, mm-hmm. that can help you in that way. And, and it's going to take you six months or a year to get up and, and running and rolling. But um, I think tons of businesses would be glad to be doing a million dollars and see 50% growth or hundred percent growth year over year. And that's very, very doable. Um, could be a channel you're not even selling in, you know? So yeah. very, very rarely have I seen, uh, Amazon sales grow in a website a decline. It just doesn't yeah. happen. So they grow together. So yeah. the cannibalism, uh, myth is just not true. Um, it's a different customer. It's a very yeah. different customer. So there's attribution now, which is pixel mm-hmm. tracking. We didn't even get into that, but it's ways of knowing data, more and more mm-hmm. data, you know, are your other sources working? Um, so yeah, huge opportunity, obviously category by category and brand by brand and story by story all differ. Um, but you know, still putting brands up and, and doing it the right way. And I think what well, that's one thing that's exciting to me is brands are approaching us that haven't even started selling on Amazon yet mm-hmm. and are just they know already that they want to do it the right way. Uh, And and those are the ones that are fun for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, uh, I can attest to that, let me tell you. And it's, uh, it's worth doing. Listen, if people are listening to this and they're like, that's cool. How can they reach you? How can they connect with you? How can they get a hold of you? If they've got more questions, maybe they want to know about your company, Markology. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, so contact form at marknology.com. So www.marknology.com, M-A-R-K-N-O-L-O-G-Y. I'm Andrew. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Andrew Morgans, just my name. Um, the company you got is on in early Instagram enough to get well. your name, did you? <laughs> yeah, I think the S on Morgans is like real unique, just the whales or something. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh,
maybe they didn't get Instagram early. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the, at Andrew Morgan's on Instagram, website, marknology.com. I'm on LinkedIn. We're, we try to be everywhere. But uh, yeah. personally, I, I like chatting with people on Instagram. Yeah, fantastic. No, that's great. And I think, um, I mean, I got in Instagram early enough to get my name as well. And I just, I'm saying that because I'm just, it's a slight bragging right thing. <laughs> so well done for doing that. Listen, we will put a link to obviously your good self, Drew. We'll put a link to marknology.com on the, in the show notes. So if you're regular to the podcast, if you get the emails, all the links will be in there. Um, and uh, yeah, Drew, listen, been an absolute pleasure. I feel like we're going to have to get you on again at some point in the future because it's like I feel like we've just scratched some of the surface on some of these things that we could do. Uh, so maybe we'll, we'll do that in, in the future, which will be great. Um, but thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, and do reach out to Andrew uh, if you want to know more. Well, a huge thanks to my special guest today, Drew Morgans. Isn't he fantastic? I love talking about his five steps for successful Amazon branding that are going to help our products stand out on Amazon and get noticed by more people. Trust me, I have a lot of notes uh, and I hope you have too. And of course, if you're listening to this podcast uh, and you can't take notes, you can get them for free without any email any of that sort of stuff, you can just head on over to the website, uh, ecommercepodcast.net forward slash 85, and you can download the notes, the transcripts, get access to Andrew, his links, all that sort of stuff is there. And of course, if this has just whetted your appetite and you're kind of like, this is not enough, I need more info on how to grow my online business, Matt. Well, let me tell you, we have another great guest next week, John Horn. And he is going to explain to us why we need to stop using Facebook ads and start using Google advertising. Sounds slightly contentious, doesn't it? So here's an excerpt from next week's show. So I view Google as a lower funnel, higher conversion rate channel. So if we have people mm -hmm. who are searching for what the client sells, um, typically I'm going to start with Google and look to mm -hmm. maxim out the, the number of people searching for that, getting that traffic, optimizing the conversion rate, so forth and so on. And then once I've been able to do that and also even prove the model and see and do testing of, okay, what messaging is performing best? What are people actually searching for? What are the pain points that they're typing in? Then I'll typically expand to a Facebook, Instagram, and so forth to capture additional audience or to get people into my funnel. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, yes great conversation with John coming up. Now, if you have enjoyed this podcast, uh, then I would appreciate it if you could rate the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from and even share it out. Uh, so, you know, we can connect with more folks around the world that we continue to grow and we can continue to bring you this content. As I said at the start, all of the notes, links and transcript to today's show are online and you can get them for free at ecommercepodcast.net forward slash 85. All that's left for me to say is thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being a part of the podcast and do come back next time as we get to interview John. And we've got some more great guests coming up on John. So make sure you subscribe, all of that good stuff. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. You've been listening to the e-commerce podcast with Matt Edmondson. Join us next time for more interviews, tips, and tools for building your business online.